Welcome live to Richmond, Virginia, the Richmond Coliseum, which holds about 10,000 fans for the contest between Virginia Commonwealth and the University of Richmond. And Glenn, as we get set for the starting lineups here in just a few moments, most games have a personality of sorts. As you look at this one, you have a forecast for us? Well, the overall philosophy of this game is going to be University of Richmond is going to try to get them in a half court game and slow up. And VCU, although they're not deep and don't have a great bench, is going to try and get into a running game. So basically, that's how you're going to see it. It's going to be the running game versus the slow up game. Of course, Virginia Commonwealth beat Illinois State easily over the year and then had a tough game with Radford winning, beating the Highlanders, but the problem was defense there in that game. Well, it's very important that uh, University of Richmond plays defense full court. You might see a press. You might even see VCU come out in full court press because they're going to want to get into the running game. The problem that Sonny Smith has, again, is that he's not deep, and any teams that press likes to rotate guys in and out. So that's what you might see in this game. And, of course, Richmond lost a season opener, then beat San Diego State, beat Virginia Tech and LaSalle in the Richmond Classic. Let's go to our public address announcer, Hunter Elliott. See the Colonial Athletic Association, the Spiders of the University of Richmond, and your land of Virginia Commonwealth University. Introducing tonight's starting lineups, first for the visiting Richmond Spiders. Starting at a forward position, a six foot six inch junior from East Hampton, New York, number 44, Kenny Wood. Starting at the other forward, a six foot six inch junior from Fork River, New Jersey, number 31, Lewis Fleming. Starting at the center position, a junior standing six feet eight inches from Huron, Ohio, number 33, Jim Springer. Starting at one guard, a six foot three inch senior from Roanoke, Virginia, number 24, Curtis Blair. And starting at the other guard, a six foot two inch sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 42, Eugene Burroughs. Coach of the Spiders, Mr. Dick Tarrant. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please stand and greet your starting VCU Rams. Starting at a forward position, a six foot six inch senior from Orlando, Florida, number 11, Eric Atkins. Starting at the other forward, a six foot eight inch sophomore from right here in Richmond, number 23, Kendrick Warren. Starting at the center position, a junior standing six feet eight inches from Snow Hill, Maryland, number 40, Sharon Mills. Starting at a guard position, a senior standing six feet three inches from our nation's capital, number 24, Carl Weldon. And starting at the other guard, a five foot 10 inch sophomore from Montezuma, Georgia, number 12, Rob Ladd. And the head coach of the Rams, Mr. Sonny Smith. So there are the starting lineups for tonight's game between Virginia Commonwealth and the University of Richmond. The fans are ready and so are we. We'll be back with the tip-off in just a moment. Stay with us. Virginia Commonwealth leading this series 22 to 14 as we take a look at the officials involved in the game tonight. Charles Tanner, our referee, Dave Dodge, and George Washington working the contest. These teams did split last year. VCU won here by six. Richmond won at the Robbins Center by four. So expect a tight game as they meet for the 37th time. Mills hits the tap, but it's controlled by Richmond, and Richmond will start offensively. Eugene Burroughs, the guard out of Philadelphia, will run the team. Okay, VCU looks like they're starting out in a Looks like a looks like a man-to-man -man right here, and you can take a look at Rod Land putting a lot of pressure on Eugene Burroughs. Burroughs driving in the lane, jumper good. Eugene Burroughs scoring the first two points of the game. 
couple of points to take note of is that Chris Brower, who's the starting two guard for VCU, has been has injured his knee in practice, so he will be coming into the game depending on how he warmed up. That was a big factor. Also, big Jim Shields, who's the starting center for Richmond, is out. That's why you're seeing Jim Springer in the game right now. Warren missing the baseline jumper, so Burroughs now sets it up again for the Richmond Smiters with a two-point lead. Inside, off the glass for Kenny Wood. And that's the thing that Richmond does so well is they execute. They run 14 different offensive sets. When they break down, that's when they go into their motion offense. Bills forces one up, tipped up by Warren, no good. And Richmond again, Springer pulls it away. Richmond moving it quickly. Blair now gets it back out to Burroughs. They're a very patient team. We talked about how they will use the clock for 30 to 40 seconds if they don't have the first option. But this is something that they don't want to do is they want to prevent VCU from getting into their running game. Warren underneath, tips it in. Warren came up with a still and gets his first two points as well. I call, I call Kendrick Warren a mini James Worthy. He's so quick, he can go by people, and he really fills the lane on fast breaks. You see him get out and play a wing position at the four spot. Warren picking up his first personal foul, the team's first. Warren averaging 28.5 points per game. Set 11 school records last year. One of the things that Coach Smith is very concerned about is Kendrick Warren picking up quick fouls, very silly fouls, like right there. He didn't have to reach back. All he had to do was stay back on defense. Weldon comes away to Warren, and it's knocked away. It'll still belong to VCU. Now, already you can see the pace that VCU is trying to set a precedent here in getting into their running game early. They want to get the ball up the floor, and that's what they that's how they think they have the advantage over Richmond. They feel they're a bet they have better athletes, they feel they're a better running team, although Richmond feels they have better basketball players and better shooters. Rod Ladd in the corner having to play for the injured uh, Chris Brower. Brower had the uh, twisted left knee on Sunday, and he did not start the game, although expected to play some. As Weldon takes the three-pointer, no good, and the Spiders have the defensive rebound. Okay, Richmond's coming down in a 1-2-2 defense, forcing Virginia Commonwealth to shoot from the outside. Burroughs will set it up. Springer dumped it inside the wood, but out top now, jumper by Blair doesn't go. Rebound to VCU. Key matchup defensively is Kendrick Warren. Kenny Wood is going to try to get him into foul trouble. And here comes the running game. Now, Richmond will run on opportunities. Locked away. Looked like goaltending to me, Mike. May have been a foul as well. And a foul has been whistled on Warren. That's his second. The basket is good. It is good. And a free throw upcoming. Take a look at the drive now. Now, there's the foul right there. Watch Kendrick Warren come in and block the shot. That was goaltending. So Kendrick Warren now with two personal fouls in the first two and a half minutes of the game. Critical fouls. That's the last thing, thing that Sonny Smith wants. He doesn't want Kendrick picking up fouls. It's a problem that he had last year. If Kendrick goes out of the game early, it's going to be critical to VCU's offense. And here's a look at uh, Curtis Blair. Completes the three-point play. Now 7-2. to two. Richmond coming out with a full-court press. And what VCU has to make sure they do is not turn the ball over and also make Richmond pay. When you break the press, it's very important that you pay for it. Kendrick Warren right there picked up his dribble, picked up his pivot foot, got called for the travel. The turnover gives it back to Richmond. Richmond holding a five-point lead with 17-10 to go in the first half. Now with two fouls on Kendrick Warren, keep your eyes out on Kenny Wood in the half-court offense. They're going to go right to him. Blair feeds Wood, can't hit. Adkins moves it to Ladd. He'll go baseline. Warren off the glass and scores. Four now, points now for Warren. Now in that play, Mike Kendrick Warren beat everyone up the floor. He got himself into great offensive position, got the offensive rebound, went right up and scored. Blair outside and has to give it up to Burroughs, who will set it up. 16 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Richmond leads by three and has the basketball. Blair. 
Jim Springer gets his first two. That's a nice offensive segment by Richmond that time. Curtis Blair really created it by penetrating in and hitting the open man in which Springer came from the weak side. One of the things that Richmond is going to have to do is they're going to have to make sure they play transition defense on Kendrick Warren, who really flies up and down the floor. They have to keep an eye on him on the fast break. Mills getting the baseline jumper over Kenny Wood to bring the Rams to within three. And the Spiders will set up offensively again against that man-to-man -man defense. Fleming. Burroughs now takes the jumper from top of the key and gets the bounce. Four points for Eugene Burroughs early. Good job that time by Eugene Burroughs. He's playing the point. He doesn't get that many shots up in the game. That time he had to shoot his touch on that jumper, penetrated in, pulled up. Mills was open for a moment, but Burroughs stripped him. And Kenny Wood will hold up. Okay, that's good pressure defense by Ladd. You're going to take note of the guards of VCU trying to pressure Eugene Burroughs and Curtis Blair once they receive the ball. Carl Weldon has the tough assignment of guarding Curtis Blair because Blair could do it all. He can shoot the three and he can pull up. That's a good defensive player that time by Carl Weldon, who I feel is going to have his hands full with Curtis Blair. That time he stayed down on defense. Picked up the offensive charge. That's a nice defensive job by Carl Wilton. First foul on Curtis Blair, the team's first. There's an official timeout on the floor. 14.59 to go in the first half. It's a five-point game. The defending Colonial Athletic Conference champions, Richmond, leads VCU 11-6 with 14.59 to go in the first half. And we welcome you back to the Richmond Coliseum. And Richmond certainly has done a good job shooting early, 5 of 7. That's right. They execute offensively very well. And on defense, again, they make, they'll try to make the Commonwealth make the great play getting into their offense. They don't do anything special on defense. They just play very fundamental defense. Both teams with four rebounds early as well. And VCU trailing by five. Goes offensively. Sharon Mills, number 40, gives it up to Brower. And Chris Brower back in the game for the first time since twisting his left knee in practice on Sunday. And he's averaging 12 points a game. Important for the team. And you can probably pick up the brace on his left knee. Okay, Richmond now going into a 3-2 matchup zone to try and focus on the shooters. Now that Brower is in the game, he just missed a shot right there. And there you see Springer coming down on the push-off on Brower, picking up the foul. Foul on Springer. Offensive foul is his first, team second. And Brower getting banged around a bit early, but Brower, as you know, is the Rams' top outside shooter, 40% from the three-point line. So an important threat from the outside for the Rams. Richmond now switching up into a man. Warren baseline doesn't go down. Blair pulls it away. Burroughs. Blair now. Again, keep your eye on Kenny Wood. They have 14 different offensive sets. A lot of them go to Kenny Wood. They want Kenny Wood to get the ball. And as you can see, Kendrick Warren, such a quick jumper, did a great job of blocking the shot there, but that's what Curtis Blair does best, is penetrate in and jump over people. Carl Weldon is going to try and ha it's going to have to try and keep him out of the paint area because that is where Curtis Blair is most dangerous. Foul called on Carl Weldon, his first, as you look at Dick Tarrant, University of Richmond head coach in his 10th season. Curtis Blair going to the free throw line, a 75% free throw shooter. One of one so far tonight. Curtis Blair was all Colonial Conference tournament team last year. First team all CAA. A lot of NBA scouts think he can play in the NBA because he's so versatile at the two position. He can shoot the three and he can also penetrate in. He's a great athlete, very good defensive guard too. Blair had 31 points against LaSalle earlier this year. Taken away, blocked away by Mills. VCU will maintain possession. Brower trying to run it to Mills. Blocked, the basket will count. 
That's exactly what Sonny Smith wants his team to do. He wants his team to push the ball up the floor, to take advantage of mismatches, and take a look at the defense right there. It looked like he just stepped in, shuffled his feet, was not in position, and got called for the foul. And Sharon Mills now goes to the foul line with a good effort. Or one shot, made the best. Two fouls on Springer early in the game. Sharon Mills, 55% free throw shooter. Completes the three-point play. Brings his team to within four. There's some full-court pressure by Carl Weldon. Just trying to slow Curtis Blair up a little bit. You know, Mike, from, from an announcer standpoint, this is a great game to call because there's so many changes. Dick Tarrant likes to push a lot of buttons, and so does Sonny Smith. Likes to change up defenses. There's been a bunch of changes on defense so far. Right there was a nice play, nice ex offensive execution. You are not going to see a team execute offensively better than Richmond. They really have a lot of patience. If they don't get into their play right away, they'll go right into a motion offense. They're in no rush. Springer scored for the Spiders, his fourth point, and the turnover gives it right back to Richmond. 13 10 to go in the first half. 15 to 9. The Spiders lead by six. Blair open. Now double team. Dumps it off. Springer baseline. Doesn't go. Tipped out. Brower has it. Blair did a nice job of playing peekaboo behind the pick. Got the ball penetrated in and hit it to Springer. Springer could make that shot. He's not a bad shooter from the outside. And there you see Carl Weldon showing he can shoot. And that was a concern of Sonny Smith. How important it was for Carl Weldon, who is playing point, to hit the outside shot. Weldon with the three-pointer. Knocked away, but uh, Weldon couldn't come up with it. Fleming trying to drive inside, dumps it off. Wood, a reverse layup is good. Four points for Kenny Wood. Kenny Wood did a great job that time of protecting the basket, protecting the basketball with the rim, going reverse. Mills will pull up for the jumper. Warren has it off the glass. Good. You Six. talk about a guy that has a knack for offensive rebounding. You're talking about Kendrick Warren. He's always around the basket. He can smell that rubber. Three-pointer goes down for Chris Fleming, his first points of the game. Now, Fleming's a three-point shooter. He's a tremendous three-point shooter. He can shoot from 25 to 35 feet out. He, had, he went 7 for 10 from three against Temple last year in the NCAA. All teams starting to pick up the intensity, and a foul is going to be called on Chris Fleming. That's his first. 11.46 now to go in the first half. Richmond holding a six-point lead. In the open, we talked about how quick Kendrick Warren is, and I thought he's one of the quickest power forwards in the country. Hey, you take a look at Kendrick Warren under the basket. He's got very quick hands. We talk about a knack for rebounding. Look at those hands. Ball just went right in his hand. He snatched it back up and just went right up real strong. Nice little soft touch for the two. Warren's leading VCU's attack here in the first half with six points. Averaging uh, just over 28 a game in the first two games of the year. VCU, of course, 2-0. and Richmond, 3-1 and to begin with. VCU will inbound. Weldon to Brower. Locked away. Battling for it. Anybody's ball. Blair for the dunk. Great hustle. That was great hustle that time by Fleming. Tapping the ball back for Blair. And there you got a good, a good sample of Curtis Blair's leaping ability. Blair with six points. Warren. Trying to feed it inside, loose on the floor, taken away now by Jarman. Great weak side defense by Fleming stepping into the passing lane and stepping the ball. Follow shot by Springer is good, he has six. Springer really gets up and down the floor, I'm very impressed. You know, we talked about transition defense. Both teams are gonna have to make sure they get back because Richmond's starting to turn the heat up. Adkins from 15 doesn't go, Springer with the board. And Gerald Jarman, the sophomore guard out of North Carolina, is in the lineup. Now Richmond will run on opportunities, on steals and deflections. Jarman going against Brower. Inside now. Off the glass, good for number 33, Springer. And eight points for Jim Springer. And with that, VCU is going to have to take a timeout. The main reason 
The main reason why Richmond has a 12-point lead right now is because they're penetrating and executing offensively. Eugene Burrow's doing a nice job penetrating in, and no one's playing defensive rebounding for VCU. They have to make sure they crash the boards, because right now, Richmond's really hurting them. Jim Springer doing a good job inside now with eight points to lead the Spiders' offensive attack and surge to a 12-point lead with ten and a half minutes to go in the first half. Blair tipped it away, but VCU comes up with it. Brower, Weldon baseline, can't go. Mills is there, blocked away. Warren tries to follow, and he's fouled. There you see the effort again. The 100% effort again by Kendrick Warren under the basket in the right place at the right time. Take a look at Sharon Mills, just can't pick it up, but you know who can pick it up is Kendrick Warren, goes right up and gets fouled. But on that play, again, Richmond showed some pressure defense, and they were able to just bother VCU who came up the floor. Whenever you full court press, you're going to get burned once in a while. Richmond didn't mind that time coming down on a three-on-one because they didn't really get much. They got Kendrick Warren to the foul line. Kendrick Warren is not a good foul shooter. It's one of the things that Coach Smith was very concerned about. He needs to work on his foul shooting, and it's nice to see that he made two. One of two tonight, a 45% average to start the year. The brings his team now to within 11. Chris Fleming going up against Atkins. Jarman, a little trouble. Now, Sonny Smith made a nice defensive move right here, getting Kenny Wood off of, getting Kendrick Warren off of Kenny Wood. But take a look at the offensive execution. Nice backdoor play. That's an old-school backdoor play coming from the weak side. Great pass by Kenny Wood. Curtis Blair with eight points now. VCU trying to play catch-up ball. Brower. Well done. Doesn't go. Two blue jerseys waiting for the rebound. Blair feeds Hodges. Very nice fast break. We talked about transition defense. Someone's going to have to play defense on Hodges out there and on Burroughs when he's in the game. Atkins trying to go baseline. Partially deflected, and the foul will go against Fleming. That's his second. Now, Atkins is very quiet offensively. They need to go to him more. They need to get him into the flow of the offense. One of the reasons why he's been so inactive on him, take a look at the good little shot. He goes straight up. Fleming went right up. I think he hit his wrist. It's a good call by the officials. Tim Weathers, the forward out of Blacksburg, South Carolina, is in the lineup. Couple of substitutes as Eric Atkins goes to the free throw line. Seven of 11 this year. This is his first one. Started 29 of 31 games last year for the Rams. As Sonny Smith tries to find a way to rally his team for 15 down. Well, you certainly aren't going to chip away by missing foul shots like that. VCU is going to have to focus on offensively executing in a half-court game, which is something that they're not doing right now. And I think the key is for them to get Atkins and Sharon Mills more involved in the offense. Baseline jumper does not go down for Weathers. Knocked around. And it'll belong to Richmond. While we have a moment, we want to remind you the announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by Virginia Commonwealth University and Host Creative Communications. In a use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this game without the written consent of Virginia Commonwealth and Host Creative Communications is prohibited. Eight minutes and 50 seconds to go in the first half. Kenny Wood nails a two-pointer and makes it 32-15. Okay, there you see the versatility of Kenny Wood, who's been really hurting him in their offensive sets on the inside and his passing there he showed he could stick it from the outside that's why he's a double threat player Adkins trying to force it inside draws the foul Jarman picking up his first now take a look at the inside play. As he goes up, he just gets hit on the arm for the foul. It was a good play. They need to try to get him the ball more inside, as we talked about before. Atkins can play facing the basket and can play the post position. That time went down low and got fouled. 
Carl Weldon to the free throw line. Missed all but two games last year with a shoulder injury, but uh, has recovered from that. Now averaging ten and a half points a game. Goes for his fifth point of the night, but it doesn't go down. And the rebound is taken by Hodges. Not making any foul shots. But what I like about this game and what I see so far is that both coaches are really pressing buttons, and both coaches use two complete different offensive. where he has about 14, 15 different offensive sets. They go into an off, a certain offensive play every time down the floor. If they don't score on it right away, they'll go into a motion offense. Sonny Smith, on the other hand, goes into a motion offense first, and then he'll go into his... Two very different... Two very effective coaches. Warren baseline and scores over Wood. And you know they worked on it defensively. They're working on trying to keep Kendrick Warren from getting the basketball. Once he gets it, he's going to score. So you're going to see someone try to front him, and you're going to see a weak side player to try and deny him from behind. There. Jarman's three-pointer doesn't go down. Rebound taken by VCU. And McCoy, who's in the lineup now, gives it up to Ladd. Three-pointer. No good. Tipped up by Atkins. It'll belong to Richmond. Take a look, you take a take a look underneath the basket. See, look at all the bodies underneath going back and forth. Now Kenny Wood is always involved with banging bodies. He's a very strong player, only at six foot six, playing the power forward position for University of Richmond. Tim Weathers in the lineup, number 32. Curtis Blair now on the wing, up top to Jarman. Weathers feeding Hodges. Kenny Wood travel. Just got a little anxious, and if you notice the offense that Richmond is running, is they're really trying to get the ball to Kenny Wood. I talked to assistant coach Bill Dooley before the game, and he told me that it's very important for, for Kenny Wood to have the ball. Although players that lead the scorer, things happen when Kenny Wood gets hand in the, on the ball because he's so versatile. Now you see Richmond sitting back into a 1-2-2 two, two defense. It's a matchup. They'll match up on the shooters. Eric Atkins can't hit. Weathers has the rebound, gives it up now to Jarman. Curtis Blair for two. Bingo, that's a pretty shot. That was a nice rebound on the defensive end by Tim Weathers. And we talked about in the open, Mike, how, how important it is for VCU to get second shots. And this one's doing a nice job on the defensive end now, preventing that from happening. McCoy looks inside, Weldon. Out top, number 24. Here's number 11, tipped away by Blair, all the way, lays it up for his 12th point. Great job, Curtis Blair is coming down with a smile, he did a great job that time playing the passing lanes. One of the things Curtis Blair does so well is he has great anticipation skills. He knows how to play the passing lanes, he knows how to lay off guys at the right time. VCU down by 18, with six minutes to go in the first half. Shot opportunity again that VCU needs to do to stay in this game. Hodges scores at the other end for his fourth point. Still an 18 point difference with five and a half minutes to go in the first half. Mike Hodges doing a nice job of trying to front catch a point. He tries to catch a point inside. Weldon trying to drive, and Tim Weathers picks up his first personal foul. And that'll send Weldon to the free throw line. But so far in the first half, the free throw line has not been a particular advantage to VCU struggling there. It's really not hurting Richmond by putting him on the line. Now, you can't play weak side defense or help defense by reaching in. You gotta play weak side defense or help defense by staying down low on defense and moving your legs. Anytime you swat at the ball, you're gonna get called for a foul. Sonny Smith in his third year after great success at Auburn. Has his Rams out to a 2-0 overall record as the tip goes down by McCoy. But it's struggling now against the rival, the University of Richmond. McCoy now with two points, and it's a 16-point game. 
Kenny Wood, 15-footer is good. Kenny Wood's really lighting it up, proving I think he's one of the best power forwards in the country at only six foot six. The thing that differentiates Kenny Wood from other players is that he's so smart. He has a ton of court savvy. He doesn't take bad shots. He gets a little anxious once in a while, but he really boxes out. He likes to play down low. He likes to help out on defense. He did a great job of helping out, but he got called for the foul as we talk about him. That'll send uh, Mills actually to the free throw line as you look at Warren. Warren with nine points here in the first half. Sharon Mills going to the free throw line. Hit his uh, only free throw attempt here in the first half. Last year he had 30 block shots in just uh, 24 games. So he was very important defensively inside. And uh, even though he didn't play at all until second semester after transferring from a junior college. He's now two of two at the free throw line for three points here in the first half. Jarman leaves the lineup as Eugene Burroughs comes in. Jarman seen about three minutes of playing time, did not score. Burroughs has four points here in the first half as he comes back in. Coach Tarrant doing a nice job of rotating the guards. You know, you see Burroughs and Gerald Jarman. He'll rotate those guys at the point position. It's an advantage that he has over Coach Sonny Smith right now, who would really like to get into a running game, but doesn't have the bench to do that at this point. He can go to some guys, but as you can see, he's keeping the same five on the floor who started this game. Wood trying to do it on his own. Doesn't, doesn't score. score. McCoy has it. Jump ball after the great effort to tie it up by Hodges but it'll belong to VCU. McCoy's a real blue collar player. Very tough underneath, only six foot five, but he really hits the boards. Only a freshman, he averaged 34 points a game and an amazing 14 rebounds a game in high school. Four minutes, 20 seconds to go in the, the first, first half. half. Lad in the corner. VCU moving it around, trying to get the good shot. Lad tripped up. Blair playing good defense on him. Mills baseline now has to get it back to Ladd, who will drive in the lane. Can't hit. McCoy follows, and he's fouled. McCoy doing a great job. Again, second shot. We talked about it in the open. This is what's keeping VCU in this game. Richmond's going to have to do a better job of preventing that from happening and preventing them from crashing the offensive boards. McCoy's very tough because at only six foot five, he's very quick, using his quickness as an advantage crashing the offensive boards. Chris Brower coming back into the lineup for Rod Ladd. Ladd got some playing time uh, starting the game, but uh, has not yet scored. McCoy going to the free throw line with two points as Chris Fleming checks back in for the Spiders. Tim Weathers with two personal fouls to sit down. I like the balance that University of Richmond has with their team. You know, they have a very good point guard. They have two point guards in Burroughs and Jarman. They have Fleming at the three position, who's a great three-point shooter. And they have Curtis Blair, who can do it from everywhere. And they have Jim Springer. And the guy that we're not seeing is Jim Shields, who's their starting center, 6'10", 215 pounds. This Richmond team, who always seems to surprise people in the tournament, they could be there again this year. Timeout on the floor, three minutes, 58 Eight seconds to go in the first half. The University of Richmond up by 14. Richmond senior guard Curtis Blair has 12 points to lead Richmond here in the first half, and he had 25 against VCU here last year. He's off and running again. Well, there you see Curtis Blair stepping into the passing lane. We talked about the, about the great anticipation skills of Curtis Blair. He knows how to read defenses. He's an excellent two-guard, great scorer. One of the things that VCU is going to have to do is off offensively execute. There you see they're only shooting 33% from the floor. It's very important that they can keep the court spread wide on offense and get into it a little bit, mixing it up a little bit. Get the ball into Atkins, let Brow start hitting a couple of shots, and that could be the key. They're not really shooting from the outside. They see Kenny Wood again going up strong with the ball. This time, Sharon Mills picks up the foul. That's his second. And that'll send Kenny Wood to the free throw line for the first time tonight. 
Now you see Fleming go in for the penetration. It's a good block by Mills, but no one's blocking out Kenny Wood underneath as he goes up. There you see Mills grab him on the arm. So important that you, when you box out on defense, you have to make sure you're there on every play because a lot of guys fall asleep after the shot's up once. They figure they did their job by boxing out, but there's always second chances and you can't let it happen. Kenny Wood, the junior forward out of East Hampton, New York. Gets his ninth point on his first free throw of the night. Misses the second, and Brower is there to take the rebound. VCU trailing 41-26 with three and a half minutes to go in the first half. In order for VCU to get back in this game, they have to do two things. They have to spread their offense out, mix it up a little bit, and they have to take better care of the basketball. Turnovers are really hurting them right now. Wood battling, and Burroughs was there to knock it away. It'll still belong to VCU. Carl Weldon will inbound. Richmond's going to zone the out of bounds play, go for the trap. As you can see, the weak side guy coming in and helping out on Kendrick Warren. Warren trying to drive, gets the uh, rebound and scores. 11 first half points for Kendrick Warren. It's now a 13 point game. I like the way Richmond pushes the ball up on made or missed baskets in control. That's the big difference. They don't take bad shots on fast breaks. They're an opportunity team on the fast break. Burroughs gives it up to Blair. Burroughs now on the wing. Feeds it into Wood. And the foul is going to be charged on Michael Hodges. The sophomore forward picks up his first. Good call, buddy. Good call by the official. Take a look at Hodges on the weak side, pushing off. Look how he uses his left arm to push off as he goes up. The official was right there and made the right call. Coach Dick Tarrant arguing his side. Rams have had a number of free throw opportunities. Seven of 12 free throw shooting here in the first half. And Atkins fails on his attempt. He's now 0 of 3 at the line in the first 20 minutes of play. He's got to follow through on his foul shot. He just bring his hand right down. That time he didn't do it either. He brought his hand down, didn't follow through. Forty-one twenty-eight. Two minutes, 35 seconds to go in the first half. VCU might hit some foul shots. It becomes, you know, an eight or nine point game. And that's why foul shooting is always so important. And for all you kids out there that are watching the foul shooters, it's so important to follow through on your foul shot. Once you release the basketball, keep your hand up like a gooseneck and follow through. Get the rotation that you need. If you're going to drop your hand down, when the ball hits the rim, there's going to be no touch on that rim. VCU with another opportunity to cut into that 13 point deficit. And Hodges picks up his second foul, number 45 for the Spiders, bumping. And that'll send VCU back to the free throw line where the Rams have struggled just a bit, but certainly get the opportunities here in the first half. It's not really hurting Richmond to pick up these fouls. Hodges is coming off the bench to try and deny Kendrick Warren the basketball. And as you can see, Hodges has been pushing him everywhere he goes to try and deny him from getting the ball, but Kendrick Warren shows him that he can make some foul shots. So the point of it is, is that Richmond can go to his bench and put different guys, Springer, Hodges, or Kenny Wood, on Kendrick Warren. Warren pulls his team to within 11. The deficit has been as many as 18. Blair bumping, falls up for the jumper. 14 first half points for Curtis Blair, and the lead is back to 13. You got to give credit to Brow that time. He did a great defensive job. Blair just did a nice job of using his athletic ability to shoot over Brow. I don't think Brow got him, but at that time he did a great job of chesting him up, keeping him out, and penetrating. He still made the shot. Take a look at the inside play, and as you can see from behind, Blair comes and just swats his arm out of the way. He gets called for the foul. Brower feeds it in now. Warren, baseline, doesn't hit anything. Goes out of bounds off Atkins and will belong to the Spiders. Kendrick Warren is an excellent player when he faces, but he's a better player when he gets down on the low post and catches the ball where he's able to put himself into offensive rebounding position. Minute 20 to go, first half. 
Blair doesn't go down. Brower comes away with the rebound. A three on two. Mills scores to make it an 11-point game. Great pass by Brower and Mills filling the lane at six foot ten, like an NBA player. Really, that's the difference between the VCU big man, between the Richmond big man, is that the VCU big man in Mills, Atkins, and Kendrick Warren can really run the floor. Richmond's going to have to focus their interest on getting back and playing transition defense on those big guys. The guards aren't the only guys that need to get back on defense. Taken away by Brower. VCU trying to get to within 10, but it's stolen by Burroughs. Three on one. Offensive foul called on Chris Fleming. Rod Ladd, Rod Ladd was really able to read that thing very easily. Look how he stays down low, gets into position, doesn't move, was there before the offensive man hit him and smash, got called for the offensive foul. It's a nice shot by Rob Land. If he would have used his arms, Mike, he would have got called for the foul. Glenn Chris Fleming now with three personal fouls and with 23 seconds to go in the first half, the shot clock is off. Mills trying to take a jumper. Adkins comes away with it. He'll go baseline, can't hit. Mills is there off the glass. Mills makes it a nine point game. And the Spiders turn it over. VCU can pull now to within seven and possibly six with a three-pointer. And what a boost that would be after trailing by as many as 18 here in the first half. VCU making a nice little run, and they're doing it on pressure defense, and they're doing it on offensive rebounding and second shots. And there's Rod Ladd burying the three from the corner. Rod Ladd with his first points of the game. What a happy man as he pulls his team to within six. VCU does a great job in the final two minutes of the first half, rallying from 18 down to trail by just six. We'll be back with our halftime activities in just a moment. Halftime activities continuing here at the Richmond Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia. Glad you could stay with us. I'm Mike Tilley, and I'm joined now by Virginia Commonwealth University Athletic Director Dick Sander. He's been kind enough to join us here during the break. And, Dick, as you think about the move from the uh, Sun Belt Conference into the Metro, what has that meant for the Rams? Well, Mike, I tell you, our fans really have thought that it has been a step upward for our program. I think the association with schools like uh, Louisville and Southern Miss and Tulane have certainly been very good. And then to have the benefit of also having Virginia Tech, which is an in-state school in the same conference as us, is certainly very beneficial to us. And then the two schools that came with us out of the Sun Belt, South Florida and UNC Charlotte, are both very good programs. So we think it's really an exciting new conference and one that will really make an, an inroad into uh, the national situation. What do you feel like VCU offers to uh, this uh, conference? Well, VCU is a large urban institution, 22,000 students, one of the large research institutions in the state of Virginia, so the academic quality certainly is one thing that it offers to the Metro Conference. And I think the other thing is v VCU has had a great tradition in basketball dating back to the days of Calvin Duncan and uh, Gerald Henderson and Edmund Sherrod, been very successful, been in a lot of NCAA tournaments, won a lot of basketball games. So from that standpoint, I think it offers a lot. But also our other programs, our men's tennis program is the top 20 program in the country. Our, our baseball team has been in the NCAA tournament. So I think it's a well-rounded program, both academically and athletically, and I think that's what a lot of conferences are looking for in schools. Has it been a smooth transition into the conference? It really has. Um, the people have just been great. Uh, the schools that have been in the conference before, Louisville and, and Virginia Tech, they have been so accommodating and very helpful in getting this thing going. And I think the one thing that's really exciting is everybody is committed to making this the best conference that they can make it. And from my standpoint is, you know, if you have that attitude, then you can figure out a way to make things work. And I think everybody has that attitude. As you look at the athletic program at VCU, what are some of the goals that you're thinking about as it relates to the, the 90s? Well, one of the things that we're very committed to is to develop the total student athlete, not just the athletic thing. That's very important, of course, but we also are very committed to the academic preparation, the social preparedness of the individual, and just to 
prepare a total student athlete. We are also very committed to become an important part of the community, the athletic program, and, and do a lot of things in the outreach to try to help the community and, and young kids. And um, we really feel that's an important part of being a student athlete at VCU. We appreciate your time in this, uh, this contest. Well, thank you. Okay. Dick Sander, the athletic director of Virginia Commonwealth University. And our halftime will continue in just a moment. Stay with us. We're at the Richmond Coliseum, Richmond, Virginia. So we're about ready to begin the second half between these two rivals. Of course, the University of Richmond out of the Colonial Athletic Association and uh, VCU joining the Metro Conference after many years in the Sun Belt Conference and uh, after the realignment of part of the Metro. And we'll see how VCU fares in that conference this year. And when you look at the top scorers on VCU, the big name that's missing, Mike, is Atkins, and they need some scoring from Atkins. He's averaging 14 points a game, and they really need the scoring punch from the outside, even more so than the inside from Eric Atkins. There's a look at the Richmond players coming back onto the floor. Kenny Wood, number 44, who has nine points in the first half, averaging 15 a game. And Richmond will get the ball to begin the second half with a six-point lead. Eugene Burroughs will run the offense again for the Spiders. Inside, Springer blocked away by Mills. He gets it out to Weldon. Great recovery that time by Mills, who was pinned up. He just came back and jumped over the shoulder to block the shot. Ladd has the ball. He had that three-pointer to pull his team to within six at the buzzer. Warren baseline doesn't go down. Feed goes out now to Blair. Blair pulling up, dumps it over. Springer can't score. Springer gets the rebound, but now it's taken away by Ladd. Ladd's 5'10". Warren is fouled. Take a look at the guy that's leading the fast break. It's six foot nine, Kendrick Warren. We talked about his speed and athletic ability. It's a good pass. Look at the hands of Kendrick Warren. That's not an easy pass to catch as you're running down, filling the lane, a ball that's logged up like that. But one of the things that makes Kendrick Warren so dangerous on offense is that he's got great hands. He can catch the ball anywhere on the court. First team foul of the second half. Warren having trouble. Maintaining possession, but Adkins had the heads-up play. Ladd now. Going around Mills, who was setting the screen. Ladd, three-pointer. Doesn't go down. Richmond with the rebound. Fleming. Okay, the three-point shooting, the outside shooting of VCU still not really on track. Richmond showing a 3-2 matchup zone, forcing Virginia Commonwealth to shoot from the outside, trying to prevent them from getting the ball down low to their big guys. Springer scores, and he's fouled. And that's excellent offensive execution, again, by the University of Richmond Spiders. One of the things that Sharon Mills is going to have to do is make sure he's not caught from behind. Look at the defensive position, Sharon Mills. Sharon Mills should have been on his side right now when he caught the ball. Instead, he was trailing him. That's why he got caught for the three-point play right there. Three fouls now on Mills as Jim Springer goes to the free throw line for the first time tonight. He's 8 of 13 at the line in the first four games of the year for the Spiders. And he gets the first one. He started the last 17 games of the season last year. Adkins can hit. Mills was there, but it's taken away by Richmond. Two on one. Jumper goes down for Blair. Nice pull up. That's how you run a fast break. Good job by Curtis Blair. And for all you point guards out there running fast breaks for your high school team, notice where Curtis Blair stopped that time. He stopped right at around the foul line. He looked left, right. Nobody was open. Had a wide open shot. That's a very good shot to take on the break. VCU trailing now by 11. Weldon going all the way. Doesn't go down. Warren with the rebound. And he's fouled. Good penetration that time by Carl Weldon. Couldn't finish the shot. And there again, we talked about the second chances that VCU is getting, which in fact is keeping them in the game. Hey, now keep your eye on Kendrick Warren. No one's boxing him out. He has the ability to use his quickness and keep balls alive. That's what makes him so effective. Kenny Wood picking up his second foul. Warren again, not a great free throw shooter this year and he's four or five in the contest so maybe he's been working on that area 
And now five of six. And it's a nine-point game. Kendrick looks a lot stronger this year than he did last year. Looks like he put on about 10 pounds all in the upper body, which is where he needed it. Inside over Mills. The basket will count. Mills picks up his fourth personal foul. Really hurts. Take a look at the weak side defense. Mills there again, too late. As he went up, he hit him right with the body. If you play weak side defense, you've got to get there early because you're going to get called for the foul. Your momentum is going to take you into the player, and you're going to pick up a foul. Springer, one of one at the free throw line tonight, looking for his 12th point. Lad baseline. Gets it back out top. Weldon brings it back out. Good right. defense. Good defense by Richmond. They're sagging off the shooters. And they're trying to deny Kendrick Warren from getting the ball. They're going to let him get him out and get it out on top where he can face. They just don't want him getting the ball down low. And there's Sharon Mills showing a nice little touch with a turnaround bait jumper down there. Mills with 13. And... You know, I told you that was the fourth personal foul on Mills earlier. It may actually be three. We'll have to check with the official score. The scoreboard indicated three, so we'll follow that for you. And certainly that would be a key loss should VCU go without him. And they're going right at him, trying to pick up the fourth or the fifth foul. And if he does have four, I'd be surprised that Coach Smith is keeping him in. Baseline jumper is good for Fleming. Five points now for the forward out of New Jersey. And it's a 12-point difference with 16.50 to go in the game. Atkins, Ladd, three-pointer. He's off, and Wood has the rebound. He's really hurt him, and they can't shoot from the outside. There was nice offensive execution that time. Take a look at the fast break. Nice job of swinging the ball around. Here's Christopher Fleming. Knew where the shooter was. Good job by Burroughs hitting Fleming. Sorry was on the left side. Can the three-point shot. Fleming now with eight points. 16-26 to go in the game. 15-point lead for Richmond. Now, for all you point guards out there, and Mike, I keep talking to the point guards out there, it's so important to know where your shooters are. Nice play by Burroughs. He saw Fleming, who's the top three-point shooter from the outside, on the wing, got his feet planted, went up with a jump shot. You know, that's what's so important. A lot of point guards don't know where the shooters are. They just pass to anybody, anybody who's open. But it's so critical to know exactly who the shooter is, which is what Burroughs did. VCU just one of eight shooting from the field here in the second half, while Richmond with 62% from the field. And that's really the difference, 56-41. It was a six-point game at the half, and it's been stretched out to a 15-point lead for Richmond. I should tell you also that Sharon Mills, number 40 for VCU, has three personal fouls, not four, as indicated earlier. Ladd has it knocked out of bounds by Blair. It'll still belong to VCU with 16-13 to go in the game. Now, within the ebb and flow of a basketball game, there's always a time where you have spurts. Spurts are so important. And right now, Richmond is capitalizing on the spurts, as VCU did in the first half, of coming down, getting turnovers, and scoring in a hurry. Warren powering up and in. He sent Springer to the floor, but Warren scores. And that's 17 for Kendrick Warren. Kendrick's so tough down in the post. He's really worked to improve his game when he faces at the foul line. And once he develops that to the extent where he's as dangerous, he's going to become an unbelievable player. Curtis Blair sets it up. Wood was open, able to dump it off, but Springer can't score, and the foul's going to be charged on Warren with the elbow. Now that time, Kendrick, I don't know if that was an intentional elbow, the official quarter right there. It seemed like Springer kind of just walked right into it. Kendrick, now Springer goes up for a shot. Now watch Kendrick just go up, just try to clear guys out, and it looked like Springer was just right there, at the, just kind of at the wrong place at the wrong, wrong time, walking into that elbow. Two fouls now on Warren. Open Springer can't get it. 
And it'll belong to VCU. Kendrick Warren doing a great job playing volleyball with that basketball on the backboard. Did a nice job of pinning it on the way up so it wasn't a goaltend. 15-20 to play. 13-point lead for the Spiders. Richmond led by 18 in the first half, but VCU rallied to cut it to within six. Warren had it blocked by Springer, but maintains for the session, scores, and he's fouled. When you take a look at this offensive set, Kendrick Warren had him on his back. He was called for the ball about 10 seconds before he got it. Take a look at the play now. He goes up, leans into him, Springer blocked the first one, so got a little anxious, and Kendrick did a nice job of drawing the foul. Third personal foul on Springer, and Warren going to the free throw line, looking for his 20th point. He's five of six at the line tonight. Rims out. Richmond with the rebound. Spiders up by 11. now with Curtis Blair at the point. He's very interchangeable. He could bring it up and he could also fill it from the wing. Wood in the lane. Blocked away by Mills. It'll still belong to Richmond. What Richmond has to make sure they do offensively is keep the court spread wide because that's what gets them opening. It seems like every time they spread the court out and get the ball into Kenny Wood's hands at the elbow of the foul line, he's picking apart guys. Take a look at that play. Mills comes from the weak side, did a nice job going up straight for the block. Back to live action. McCoy stole the inbounds pass, and Ladd scores on the layup. There it is again. It was a good steal by McCoy stepping into the passing lane, capitalizing on the turnover. Blair comes right back. Can't score. Rebound Fleming. Off the glass, no good. Tipped up, no good. Good Warren with the rebound. Three on one. Warren. And that'll get him going, and Richmond calls for a timeout. That's why Kendrick Warren is so dangerous, because he can run the court and go in for the monster slam. Timeout on the floor, 14-15 to play. VCU rallying again. We talked about this game being a game of spurts, a game of momentum, and here you see VCU stepping into the momentum a little bit, stepping into the passing lane, and watch Kendrick Warren, who picked up the steal, finish off the play for the monster slam. Kendrick Warren has brought the VCU Rams back to within seven points as Sonny Smith paces the sideline. His Rams must play tough defense. Burroughs going up against Lamb. Good defense by the VCU, really turning up the heat. And that is what's called a momentum breaker right there. Anytime you come up and hit a three-point shot like that, when there's been two or three turnovers, it kills momentum, it kills the crowd. Fleming with the three-pointer. The junior forward out of New Jersey who transferred from the University of Connecticut, scoring on the three-pointer, stretching it back to 10, battling inside, and a foul is going to be called. Number 11, Eric Atkins of the Rams, so that'll give it back to Richmond. Take a look at Warren going up. His body wasn't squared. That's why he took a bad shot, and Atkins got called from behind in pushing. Richmond up by 10. Burrows against Ladd. Knocked away. Good effort by Atkins to come up with the steal. And that's how you play low post defense, getting your hand in front of the plate to deflect the ball. Atkins was open, couldn't hit. Fleming has it for Richmond. 13-13 to go. 10-point lead for the Spiders. Again, it's Ladd and Burroughs going head-to-head -head out top. Driving in, Blair can't score. Rebound, Wood. Warren he comes away with the rebound, feeds it to Ladd, who'll go all the way, and he's fouled. That's nice penetration, very good awareness by Ladd. He saw an opening, nice little crossover dribble. One of the things that Richmond's going to have to do is get back on transition, aside from the big guys, also stop the guards. Ladd, Ladd should have been stopped right there. Instead, Fleming stood up on defense, and Ladd goes in and gets, draws the foul very nicely on Kenny Wood. There's a look at Springer, who has four personal fouls. He'll have to leave the game now. 14 points for Springer in the contest. 
And Ladd at the free throw line for his first free throw of the season. He'll have another one coming. And Brower has come to the scorer's table to replace Ladd should he make it. It's now a nine-point game, and Brower will come in. And remember, Brower sort of ignited the Rams in the first half. But Ladd has done a good, good job of doing the same thing here in the second half. 12.50 now to go in the game, and again, it's been the uh, deficit is single digits as VCU struggling from the field, but now Richmond has had the same problem. Shot does not go down. Here goes Warren. Brower, three-point shot. Blair has the rebound for Richmond. See, that's what they need. They need Brower to make those three-point shots, and it was a great move by Sonny Smith, who I feel is one of the top coaches in the country, in inserting Brower right now. See, they need him on the fast break for his three-point shooting, and they also need him once they get down half court, which will open the game for Kendrick Warren down low. And what's really hurting, conversely, Richmond, is that they're not really getting into their offensive execution on the half court, which is really what coach, what's concerning Coach Tarrant and his coaching staff right now. They're not getting into it. They're not flashing guys around. They're not getting into their motion offense. Once the, once the play, the play set breaks down. VCU getting it back following the travel by Chris Fleming. Weldon. McCoy gives it over to Brower. McCoy has it taken away. All the way off the glass does not go down. Brower has the rebound. Tough shot to make it. Here comes a slam, gentlemen. Hello. 23 points for Warren, and it's a seven-point game. 11 minutes, 30 seconds to go. Blair open for the three. Every time VCU comes back with an exciting play, Richmond counters with the three. And as you can see, the crowd goes from a 100 decibel level back down to a 10 to quiet them down. And that's really what's keeping Richmond in the game. They seem to be countering very well on big plays. Weldon, three-pointer. The Richmond lead is back to seven. Stolen away. Warren, he has it picked off by Blair, and now a blocking foul has been called on McCoy. Now, Kendrick made a nice play that time. See, he threw it up, and if he would have caught that, it would have been called for the travel. Instead, he just let it go. He wanted to catch it back. He wanted to throw it ahead of him so he can catch the ball back, but he just didn't have control. Jarman coming back in for the Spiders. Just under 11 minutes to play. Seven point lead for Richmond. Fleming throws up a prayer. Wood is there for the rebound, baseline, and scores. Kenny Wood is so valuable. It's incredible. Offensive rebounds, he's a great passer. He's the hub of this offense, even though Curtis Blair is the leading scorer. He's so valuable. He's the type of guy you can go to in crunch time. Knocked away by Hodges. And he picks up the foul. That's three on Michael Hodges, the sophomore forward. Fifth team foul. McCoy taking the inbound pass and gives it up to Brower, number 21. Weldon back to Brower. Weldon. Both want to take the three-pointer. Weldon finally does. Atkins in the lane with the rebound. Out to Weldon. And a new shot clock with under 10 minutes to go in the game. Here's the second chances again coming into play. That's a nice play. Nice feed into Kendrick Warren. Who went up. No call. No call. I thought he got hit on the arm, but there was no call. Richmond's doing a nice job, Mike, of sitting back into their zone, forcing VCU to shoot from the outside, and they're really not getting any help. Rao is going to have to start hitting some outside shots. Kenny Wood was playing strong defense, and McCoy can't hold it. Out of bounds, turns it over to Richmond. The nip-and-tuck game like this, turnovers are so important. 
both teams have to make sure they take care of the basketball and execute offensively on a half-court game because the crowd is getting into it now. If you're going to get a steal, they're going to fast break and score. Wood, double team, trying to go against Warren and Brower. Taken away, Weldon. Feeds to Adkins, off the glass. Five points for Eric Adkins. The VCU guards are really digging in on defense. Did a nice job that time, Carl Weldon did, of stepping into the passing lane, staying down on defense, kept his head up, and hit Adkins fill in the lane. Offensive foul underneath the basket will give it back to VCU. Hodges again picked up a quick foul underneath the basket. And that's four now on Michael Hodges. There's a look at Springer who's back in the lineup as Hodges had to go to the bench with four personal fouls and four points here in the contest. Seven point deficit for VCU. The Rams have gotten as close as six. Brower, Weldon's open. Atkins back to Weldon. Keep your eye, keep your eye on Kendrick Warren, who's going to try and step into the seams, but he's playing out top. Take a look at the second chances. This is what they can't allow to happen. And as you can see, Kenny Wood is really battling in there against the 6'10", Sharon Mills. Just got a little anxious. As he wrestled the ball away, he got called for a travel. Now take a look at Kenny Wood who actually was on the strong side of the ball, and as he tried to wrench the ball away, he moved his feet, got called for the travel. Warren inside the lane, scores, and he's fouled. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly where Kendrick Warren is very effective against the zone. He's very good at stepping into the seam, splitting it, and going up strong to get fouled. Warren had 13 points in the first half. He has 12 already in the first 12 minutes of the second half. And he goes to the free throw line, trying to bring his team to within four. Get ready for the pressure on by VCU now, if he, only if he makes the shot. Brower tipped it up, but didn't go down, and Richmond has the rebound. 64-59, eight and a half minutes to play. Richmond holding on the lead, and every time Richmond has silenced the VCU comeback. And Wood does it this time. Kenny Wood made a great play coming down the right side. No one was playing defense on Kenny Wood. He actually faked the pass first, saw an opening, and went in. And that's a great play by Kenny Wood, recognizing an opening. Warren can't hit. Rebound to Atkins. He pulls up. Five-point difference. Don't be surprised if you see Richmond use the clock a little bit for about 30 or 45 seconds before they put the ball up. They got a little lead, and this is really where discipline and coaching comes into play. Blair blocked away by Mills. Mills has it, and he's fouled. Not a good shot by Curtis Blair. Carl Weldon did a great job of staying down on defense. He didn't foul Blair as he went in with his penetration. That's super defense by Carl Weldon. Four fouls now on Chris Fleming. And that sends Sharon Mills to the free throw line now as VCU is in the bonus. Now take a look at the defense by Carl Weldon. He stayed down low. He tried to get the ball on the way up. He didn't get it. And take a look at the foul right there on Fleming. Mills can't hit the first of the one and one. Tipped up, no good. Warren is there. Wood has it. And Wood will control it for Richmond. Kenny Wood has his hands filled playing defensive rebounding down low against Kendrick Warren. Sharon Mills, Kenny Wood only six foot six. Really needs to box out. You got to get bodies out when you have a disadvantage in the height. Tipped away, out of bounds. It'll belong to VCU. Looked like Brower tipped it out that time. Curtis Blair. Really a little surprised. Timeout on the floor. Seven minutes, 12 seconds to play. And Richmond's lead is evaporating. It's, just... it's so important 
for both teams to play weak side and help side defense. Take a look at Kenny Wood go right in for the slam dunk. It was a great play off of the, one of the 14 offensive sets that Richmond runs, but no one was there for the help side defense. you got to get someone coming from the weak side to stop him early in that play, which would have made the ball come right around. You can check out how the teams did on the first half compared to the second. Richmond not doing nearly as well as it did in the first 20 minutes. And it's a five-point deficit for VCU as Brower and Ladd are back in the lineup along with Adkins. Warren now has his hand on it. Ladd's left open. And he could stick it. He hit four three-point shots against Old Dominion. He's one of the team's leading three-point shooter. Richmond Star is going to have to be aware that both Brower and Ladd can shoot the three. Wood is fouled. By, by Warren, and Kendrick Warren picks up his third. Now Kendrick is trying to come around the top. All he did was reach in. He went for the steal and didn't get, get it and got called, called for the foul. One more foul, and Richmond will be in the one and one bonus. Six and a half minutes to go. Okay, VCU now getting away, zoning out of bounds plays, getting away from the man-to-man, -man, going into a 2-3 zone. Jarman is open. Rebound by Warren, and Jarman will commit the second personal foul. Notice where Kendrick Warren caught that rebound. That's what I talked about in the beginning of the show, how quick he is. He went all the way out by the foul line, which is really a guard's. It's really a guard's rebound to get that ball. Now look what Kendrick is. He was down low, and he just comes up and snatches the ball by the foul line, and there Burroughs picks up the foul by reaching in. Sonny Smith in his third year at VCU, 27 and 34. As Warren goes to the free throw line, can hit. Had an opportunity to tie it up with two free throws, but Richmond holds a two-point lead. We talked about tempo. We talked about the fact that Richmond likes to play an offense where they spread the court and use the clock, and they're not really doing that, and this is what's happening. Look at, look at, the, look at the impatience that Richmond's having. They did a nice job of a little role reversal of crashing the offensive boards, but they're not really getting the shots that they usually get off of an offense that where they work the clock for 25 or 30 seconds. Two offensive rebounds for Richmond before Blair scored his 22nd point. Glad. Warren's going to drive all the way. Looked like an NBA play for Kendrick Warren. That's a very hard shot when you're coming in from the side off the runner. Threw it up very soft. They're going to have to play Kendrick Warren and get a man on it because he could do it from the outside too. And there's Kendrick Warren again. And Ladd, good pass by Warren going down to Ladd. Nice play by Ladd. Stepping in to draw the foul. The refs actually might have called it off. The foul occurring before the layup. And so... The basket doesn't count on uh, Eric Johnson's uh, first personal foul. Ladd wanted the bucket and the foul. Watch it again. Take a look at the awareness by Kendrick Warren. Look how quick he is. Extreme quickness on the, on the shot block. Now, what Ladd tried to do was step in front to draw the foul. I thought he might have got it, but they didn't call it. Sonny Smith thought the same thing you did, Glenn. <laughs> But I've seen uh, Coach Tarrant pull his uh, jacket off a couple of times over some calls. It's now a one-point game. The Rams can tie it up here. VCU trailed by as many as 18 points in the first half and have come back to tie up the University of Richmond at 68 all and five minutes to play at the Richmond Coliseum. The possession arrow and the momentum arrow is pointing in the direction of VCU right now. They're playing excellent defense and take a look at Richmond trying to work the clock a little bit to get the shots that they want. Fleming, Wood, back out to Fleming, pressure from Adkins. Wood against Warren, off the glass, tipped up by Springer, but it won't count. 
Offensive interference, goal pending. And the Richmond bench, the Richmond coaching staff is off the bench. They thought that that ball was out of the cylinder. And let's take a look. That's a great camera shot that looked like the ball was out of the cylinder. And it was a great tip by Springer. The officials called it a goaltending. Offensive goaltending went the other way. VCU has a chance to lead for the first time tonight, but Adkins can't hold it, and VCU turns it over. Talk about intensity. Both of these teams and both of the coaches have found something to, to go at each other about in this game. But both coaches has, has not sat down over the last five minutes of the game. They're both pushing buttons, trying to make offensive work, offenses work, and defenses work. But what's so important right now is offensive execution and to take care of the basketball. Richmond seems a little rattled on offense. Jarman did a nice job of holding on to it after it was stripped by Ladd. Under four minutes to play. Knocked away. Atkins gives it up to Ladd. And again, VCU can take the lead. That's a nice pullback by Rod Ladd. Set the play up. He didn't have anything. He pulled it back out. Richmond sitting in their zone again, trying to focus their efforts on Warren and force VCU to shoot from the outside. Brower. Mills open baseline. Atkins trying to go over the top. Rebound taken by Richmond. Blair against Ladd left to hold up. Nice defense by Ladd. He didn't reach, just kept the player in front of him. Good job by Ladd staying down on the staying down low on defense. 3.15 to play. Tied up at 68. Wood in the lane. And Mills will be charged with the foul. And that's four now on Sharon Mills. That's exactly what Richmond has to do. They have to get the ball into Kenny Wood. This play was designed for Kenny Wood. He had good position. The offensive player has the advantage whenever you get into the paint area and are fronting somebody, and they got called for the foul reaching in. Jarman goes to the bench with Burroughs coming back in the lineup. Wood at the free throw line can hit. It's still tied at 68. Both teams not connecting from the foul line, Mike, but offensively, I'd be very surprised if when Richmond gets the ball, they don't look for Kenny Wood every time because he seems to be their mainstay on offense. Warren doesn't get it to fall. And again, Wood was there with the all-important rebound. Keep your eyes on Kenny Wood in the low post position. Both teams have struggled here in the last couple of minutes trying to find the basket. 68 all with two and a half minutes to play. Ladd reaching in against Burroughs. Wood. Blair now in the lane. Doesn't go. Warren pulls it down. Wood did a nice job of recognizing the double team, but Carl Weldon did a better job defensively, staying down on defense, forcing Curtis Blair to take a bad shot. Warren, Weldon, Atkins, and he's fouled. Chris Fleming fouls out of the game. And that really hurts Richmond right there. Getting their best three-point shooter out of the game. Now Fleming trying to step into the passing lane. He was just a little bit out of the control, and he just bumps him with his body. So Fleming is going to have to leave the game with 11 points. With two minutes to go in the game, Fleming did a nice job of trying to step into the passing lane, but he should have known he had four fouls. He should have known not to go out of control and go for a steal. You want to keep players. You don't want to gamble at this point in the game. You want to keep players in front of you. So coming in is Michael Hodges, the 6'6 uh, forward. And the sophomore has to come in for the junior. Eric Atkins, the senior forward out of Orlando, Florida, can put VCU ahead. That's a big foul shot by Atkins, finally getting him back on track. Mike, I'm very impressed 
with the way VCU is playing defense this second half. They're really digging in. They're trying to deny Kenny Wood the basketball. Carl Weldon is doing a marvelous job defensively guarding Curtis Blair, preventing him from penetrating him. And that's what's really taking away from the offense of University of Richmond. There's timeout on the floor. 2-0-1 to play, and VCU is on top. Virginia Commonwealth leads the Richmond Spiders 70-68 with 2.01 to play. And you talk about the excitement and intensity of college basketball. These two teams are playing for city pride. And while Richmond has done an outstanding job controlling much of the game, VCU has done an outstanding job in coming back. And one of the reasons that defense by the Rams that has held Richmond to just 35% shooting here in the second half. Early this year, the University of Richmond lost the game to UC Santa Barbara, and the main reason they lost was because of offensive execution. And here you see in the second half of this game, they're not really executing offensively. They're not getting the court spread wide. They're not getting the ball to Kenny Wood where he can score. And they're not isolating Curtis Blair, putting him in areas where he can score. They need to do that over the next minute of this game in order to come back and win. Mills made the great play defensively to give VCU the basketball with 1.20 to go. VCU leads by two. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Inside, Warren baseline trying to go against Springer, but now he gives it back out top to Atkins with seven seconds on the shot clock. Warren's going to go. Warren has the rebound, but he's called for the foul going over the back of the, the rebound, and that, uh, for Warren, will be his fourth. Atkins made a great play, recognizing there was only seven seconds left. When, when Warren caught the ball right here, he knew the go-to guy. That ball just sat on the rim. It just wouldn't fall. And take a look how anxious, look how quick Kendrick Warren is getting to the ball. He just came over the top and got called for the foul by coming over Kenny Woods' back. Fouling him with the line. Big shots, big foul shots right now. The pressure's on. One of two tonight. Warren with the rebound. Fifty seconds to play. Now they might have to pick up a foul once that clock gets down to about 40 seconds. You will see University of Richmond play a try and foul and put a VCU guy on the line. Warren in the lane makes a move. That's where Kendrick Warren is so valuable. He could score on broken plays like right there. He was able to isolate a guy, take a one-on-one. -on -one. With 29 seconds left, they could use the clock here. Atkins and Weldon trying to connect. 22 seconds to go, a four-point deficit. Knocked out of bounds, it still belongs to Richmond. And you're right, they should have held the ball rather than going for the uncertain points. Although they had a good shot, there was no need to push the ball up at that point. They had VCU on top, 72-68. Richmond to inbound with 17 seconds to play. Burroughs trying to make something happen. Blair blocked away, but it'll still belong to Richmond with 11 seconds to go. It's a nice play by Mills. I thought Blair should have pulled up and shot the three. Blair inbounds to Hodges. Burroughs inside the woods, off the glass. Timeout, six seconds to go. Richmond to within two, but will belong to VCU under the Richmond basket. Now, right now, all VCU has to do, and as we take a look at the Richmond bench, trying to decide, should we foul right away? Should we put them on the line? Which is what I think they're going to do. As soon as the ball is in bounds, they're going to try and foul right away. The key is to try and force the worst foul shooter to get the ball right now. So, so important. Let's listen with Vic Tarrant, the Spiders head coach. He's working inside his huddle. The assistant coach is getting involved and into the Rams huddle with Sonny Smith. Great 
hammer work. We really were able to see what type of an offense, offense that VCU is going to try and implement here. And as you see, Sonny Smith is going to try and use a pick for the guard to come from the weak side to get the ball. All they want to do is get the ball in bounds and pass right away to prevent the foul from happening. Richmond, Richmond is going to try and foul right away. You talk about ice cold, take a look at that percentage. Both teams down 33%. Uh, as you can see, they foul Eric Atkins right away. Hodges, of course, will foul out of the game with his fifth personal foul. And Atkins is 7-11 uh, entering this game, and he's hit three out of six free throws in this contest. No time ran off the clock, so six seconds to go. As mentioned, Hodges fouling out of the game with four points. Chris Fleming, you'll remember, the uh, junior forward who started the game, fouled out with two minutes to play. So Richmond has had some foul troubles in the contest. Sonny Smith has to be concerned right now. Atkins, who has not shot well from the free throw line this game. Karen again pushing the right button, fouling the right guy. He's three for eight this game, and we'll see what he does. He's a big time pressure shot. Shooter's touch, Mike. Take a look at his arm. His arm stayed up in the air. The ball hit the rim. Nice backspin. VCU leads by three. He can make it four with six seconds to play. Rims out. There's plenty of time to jack up a three. Blair stops three pointer. Doesn't go. And it's over. Bragging rights, bragging rights this year, go to VCU. And you know the fans will be talking about it at work tomorrow. But don't forget, these two teams are going to play down in Richmond's home field, home court, if you will, on December 28th. Take a look at that trophy. That's exactly what they're playing for, the city championship. The trophy this year goes to Virginia Commonwealth. Great coaching job by Sonny Smith. Great coaching job by Dick Jarrett. Both coaches. Take a look. Think these guys are happy. A great win for Virginia Commonwealth, down by 18 points in the first half, and coming back to beat the Richmond Spiders 73 to 70. For our entire crew, this is Mike Tilley wishing you a great evening as we say so long from the Richmond Coliseum.